Inflation hit a whopping 7.5% this month, and with thumbnails and titles and articles such as this, it would give you the impression that perhaps the world is coming to an end. But with so many new retail investors that have entered the investment class over the last couple of years, there is a lot of good news because there's plenty of data that would suggest that during inflationary periods, investment classes have tended to perform very well. And that is what I'm going to be talking about in this video. What is some of the data that would basically support this fact pattern or this notion that during inflationary periods, it would perhaps be a mistake to exit out of some of your investment type of portfolio and move to something else like cash as an example. So let's start with perhaps the easiest one, which is stocks, the stock market in general. Over the last several inflationary cycles, the stock market for all intents and purposes has resulted or has yielded not an inconsequential rate of return. Generally speaking, there are several aspects of the stock market that have underperformed during these inflationary cycles, and we are seeing some of that that is happening in the current marketplace as well, i.e. those companies that do not have any earnings and are considered high growth for all intents and purposes, yet they have absolutely experienced a precipitous decline of 60, 70, 80% at this pullback that we have experienced thus far in the stock market. But if you look at the overarching stock market as a whole, the good news is that these types of companies basically make a small portion of the overarching stock market or some of these broad-based indexes, such as the S&P 500. The majority of the S&P 500, as an example, does have the ability to basically control prices or has pricing power. Therefore, if their prices of raw materials goes up and as Assuming the notion that there is plenty of demand in the market as a whole, their products get priced as well upwards and it gets sold off into the markets due to which these companies, they all tend to perform just fine. And notice here, we're talking primarily about inflationary periods. I'm not talking about a recessionary type of environment. I'll talk about recessions a little bit later in this video. Now, the other benefit when it comes to the market, the stock market at this stage, is the notion that we're in a pretty healthy economy. Unemployment is extremely low and companies are continuing to beat consensus EPS on all of their earnings. 60, 70% of companies are outperforming consensus EPS at this point. And even if we were to take a moment to zoom out a little bit and move to other investment asset classes beyond those that is just the stock market. So if you were to look at housing as an example. So now housing in itself during inflationary periods has also yielded a very high rate of return. And this is not just on the notion of the prices when it comes to a lot of these homes, but if you have a home that you're basically able to rent out, people have been able to charge higher rents for those as well, thus further increasing the rate of return on their housing-based investment. Now in this market that we're in right now, the other benefit when it comes to the housing market in general is the notion that there is a supply shortage. When there is a supply shortage, it's already pushing up the rate of return when it comes to the housing sector as a whole. If you're one of those individuals who's perhaps not been able to buy a home in this environment that we're in because these prices are so high and interest rates are continuing to go up and so on and so forth, there's plenty of other avenues through which you can participate in investing into the housing sectors. Take, for example, REITs or housing-based stocks or real estate ETFs or platforms such as Fundrise. There's plenty of opportunities where you're able to invest into the housing sector through one of these different investment vehicles. So it's not just stocks and it's not just housing that tend to perform well during inflationary periods. If you look at commodities as well, they also have a tendency of our performance during these periods of time. Whether it's oil prices or natural gas, copper, aluminum, they've all had nice increases in value of late. And with inflation and other macro conditions, the likelihood of prices going up for commodities is certainly not something you want to overlook. Now, the one asset class, which is perhaps not a good idea to be in during inflationary periods is, of course, bonds, because as bond yields basically go up, the prices effectively do come down. So to compound to that in terms of additional good news, there's plenty of studies that are basically showing that the rate of change when it comes to inflation is actually expected to decline as we progress through the course of the year. And that in itself is also a good thing when it comes to a lot of these investment classes as well, because perhaps it will take away from some of the high degree of volatility that is basically permeating in the stock market at this point. Now, what happens in the event that there is a policy mistake and it basically tips the economy over into a recessionary type of environment? But that in those types of instances, of course, things get significant 
significantly more challenging and it pretty much impacts just about everyone. Because one of the key things when it comes to recessionary periods is for all intents and purposes, demand is shot. So when demand is shot, companies are unable to basically sell off their products. When companies are unable to sell off their products, it basically results in layoffs. It basically results in cost cutting type of measures. And this, of course, naturally speaking, results in lesser wages when it comes to people's pockets. And that, of course, has got a pretty vicious cycle when it comes to the overarching health of the economy. But again, when it comes to recessions, perspective matters there as well. So if you were to look at the last several recessions, the 2007 to 2009 Great Recession, the 2001 dot-com recession, the recessions that were happening in the early 90s, as well as the couple of recessions that happened in the 80s as well, the duration of all of those recessions was 11 months or less. Now granted, historical performance is by no means supposed to be an indicator of future performance as well, but what we do know is the notion that had you pulled out of the market during any of those recessionary type of periods, you would have potentially missed out on a significant bull run. As boring as it sounds, what seems to work best is regular consistent investing into a diversified portfolio over a long period of time and to ignore the clickbaity thumbnails, titles, and headlines. The other thing I'll just quickly mention before we kind of turn off of this video is what's also beneficial is continuing to have a work chest, a war chest of funds that in the event that the market continues to decline, that you are able to deploy this war chest and basically buy some of these indexes or even individual stocks at fairly low valuations. As the old adage goes, nobody ever made money by buying high and selling low. And when it comes to these types of conditions, if there is a continued decline in the market, it could present itself to be a compelling opportunity to create some significant amount of wealth over the long term. Anyway, to calm down some of this fear that is basically in the market, don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm so this video gets pushed out and there is a sense of optimism that's basically out there. And while you're at it, also subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell and I'll see you in the next one.